Hello and welcome back. Now I'm going to show you how we can work faster in Krita. So let's, let's get into this. First tip. First tip is to name your layers. I think that's the, <laughs> the obvious and I keep saying that. And, and sometimes I don't do it myself. But I think about it. If you start animating something and then you have a bunch of layers and you don't know what is where and why. And then you have to change something or have to edit something. What are you going to do? Hmm? Do you know anything on this layer? Hmm? Do you know that layer? I don't think so. Name your layers and you will save yourself a lot of time. Next tip is the shortcuts. Recently I saw someone saying that it was the last one. The person who said that they don't like to remember shortcuts. What? What? Is what? Are you a goldfish? Remember the shortcuts. They're not a lot. There are a couple of them. So the one, the most the trivial one of them all is the control and Z. Yeah, we, we all know that. If you're on the map, it's command and Z. The other shortcut, which I think is the previous, not previous, but it's the obvious one. There you go, that's the worst. It's E. E is for the eraser inside Krita. Um, it's good to know it. I decided to put it uh, on one of my buttons on my uh, pen so I, I can switch between. Because once you press it, it selects the, the um, eraser. You press it again, it goes back to the brush, which is the shortcut B, by the way. Now, the other shortcuts, if you hold shift and you select multiple layers, it works. If you also hold shift and select multiple keyframes, it also works because sometimes you need to select a bunch of keyframes and then move them to one on the each side and it's just easier to select a, a bunch and not just one by one especially on the animation time timeline frame timeline time, timeline <laughs> anyway moving on control and b control and b is a very handy shortcut and because it allows you to um all correct if you will your image or your, your frame or your layer yeah it is very helpful control b the next shortcut which kind of slides in into the next step which is also the clone frame versus the duplicate frame or copy frame uh, first of all what's the difference uh you can copy and paste keyframes in your timeline which will allow you to work faster yes but there's another function which is the clone frame the clone frame basically does what it says it is cloning your frame and if you make any change to that frame or the clone frame that change will be applied to both of these frames so if you have more frames that change will be applied for the other frames and while in the duplicated frame you can copy and paste but if you make a change to that particular frame that change will stay only for that frame itself and it will not apply for the previous frame or the next frame that you had copied before that before making the change okay so there's a shortcut for that uh if you want to let's say make a clone uh, on a bunch of frames you can select those frames and while they're selected you can hit alt on your keyboard and you can move them around your timeline and you know you now you have a clone frame a bunch of them not just one it's good, I know. Then that, that one is a very good one. So I again don't be don't be stupid, don't be stubborn, stubborn, stubborn. There we go. Uh learn a couple of uh, shortcuts. They will be helpful and they will speed up your whole process in the future. The other very important uh I think it's important is basically to know the brush settings and not just the brush settings. <laughs> not just the brush settings but also your pen pressure settings you can do that by either using printer and you can adjust the the brush size and the way you draw in uh, on every individual brush in printer because it has the uh the brush the brush the brush engine and you can do that separately you can test out how how it feels anyway the other one is to use the software of your tablet uh for example, I'm using Huion here, and Huion comes with a Huion software where I can adjust my pen pressure based on the way I'm liking it for individual programs, not just for the whole experience. So I can adjust the pen pressure the way I like it in Krita. I can do that separately for, let's say, Blender. I can do that for Clip Studio, Photoshop, and etc. And now we come to the Onion skin. I know. Probably you don't know about onion skin. Uh, maybe you were waiting for this uh, segment. The onion skin uh, it comes with the program. Obviously, you don't have to look for it um, unless uh, your setup is not for animation. You can set that 
uh, by going to this place over here and it will be set up for animation and your skin is there and you can adjust the settings of your only skin you can adjust the opacity of the previous frame and the next frame and the current frame and you can do that for the the 10th frame or the minus 10th frame or whatever uh, but before you play with that you will notice that your only skin is not on technically because on your layer that you have you have no animation so in order to um activate your on your skin you need to make a new keyframe on your layer that you want to animate and automatically once you start drawing and start making more uh keyframes on that layer you will see that your the skin is there uh, if you want to turn it off uh, you can use the light bulb or if you want to turn it on you can still use the light bulb that appears after you create a new keyframe on that specific layer because usually layers they will not have the light bulb on in order to get that you create a new keyframe and uh, sometimes it's good to turn off the only skin and just look at your drawing because sometimes it gets messier so keep that in mind too many animation it's something old apparently <laughs> it used to be new for Krita, but now it's been a while and uh, you know what it's it's there it does have free animation but is it good it's it's questionable but it's there and you can use it then yeah that's 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 what i will say no i will say more of course uh but it's very fragile thing to use in Krita. Uh, maybe try to use it for shorter animations because what happens is a lot of times and when you start using three animation in your animation uh file in Krita, sometimes it crashes for whatever reason i don't know how it is it with the newest version i hope it's a bit better so how to do a three animation uh, if you have a layer that you have animation on and you want to move that animation somewhere across the screen so what's the idea the idea is to add a right button on the layer that you want to add to the three animation a right button and add transform mask that transform mask will be um, your three animation in order to animate that transform mask though uh you the only way you can do it by is by adding keyframes but those keyframes you will not add in the normal timeline you have to open the animation curves timeline which is literally next to your animation timeline and from the plus button you can start adding keyframes on that animation curves timeline uh and you can use the move tool to move around uh the your layer basically you're moving your transform mask that has to needs to be selected technically you are animating the transform mask and yes there are a couple of other buttons there uh the keyframes are not like uh, as the normal keyframes that we see in crypto they're like little dots do not move them okay just don't move them it becomes more complicated do not move them uh <laughs> you can move them in the normal timeline if you want to extend the 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 timing or the the, the pacing if you will um but into the in the animation curves it's a bit harder to work with them and uh you i mean you can add the animation the easy ease and easy out uh they have a couple of buttons to do that on a specific if you choose a keyframe and you can press the bezier the smooth interpolation uh, and there's another one the bezier curve interpolation as well it does work uh but you can play around with that and uh, and by actually making some curves with those keyframes that we see here on the animation curves and that's a little bit complicated but but i i believe in you use as little as possible the animation uh the, the pre animation um but it's there and you can use it good luck the last tip actually is to work in segments uh you can't expect to do a full animation let's say uh, a five minutes animation only on one file of crystal because it gets heavier uh you can get lost very easily so even one minute sometimes can be a lot but you can segment segment your uh, your work and let's say you do let's say a scene of about uh, 10 seconds and then you render that and then you uh, start work on another scene that could be around 10 or 20 seconds usually i notice that i don't have problems around 500 600 frames uh, in total that's like 20 seconds or so uh, but then again that will depend on your pc
I know that a lot of people do want to render them once they are done with their animations, they want to render them into video so they can upload them straight to YouTube or whatever. Uh, but that, that's just not ideal. Maybe instead of rendering your animations into uh, separate video clips, you can render them into image sequences, which will be, I mean, depends, I guess, but it will. It's not gonna be time consuming as much, but it uh, maybe but it will give you more room to work with. For example, if I want to um, just render a character on, a, on, a, uh, on one layer and I don't want to have any backgrounds, I can do that by using the image sequence option. And I can just have my character in image sequences and I can later on when I use my editing program, I can position that character the place I wanted him to be or she. To be at and i can also change colors i can add um, uh, effects on top of them uh, and that's a bit more it uh, basically goes into the composing uh segment of any animation that you see um the studios uh, they do that uh, that allows them to add more and have more control on the different elements of every single animation if you do have the time try to experiment with this method where you instead of rendering the the thing in a in a video form i try to render the different elements into image sequences with no background of course and work and you can add more stuff to them later on in your editing process later okay okay i'm getting hot in here <laughs> i recorded this for the first time anyway Thanks so much for watching this. Uh, I hope the, the tips were useful. I think they are, um, and the examples as well. Uh, if you have more tips, I guess, or you have a better solutions to them, you know, comment down below. I would love to see, uh, you know, to learn something new today. Uh, and, and, and yeah, that's that's gonna be all for me. Uh, take care. Um, yes, I'm gonna see you in the next one. Um, feel free to like, subscribe, and whatever you feel like. And yeah. Goodbye for now. Yeah.